There are three quarterbacks I want to discuss as NFL prospects. So these are three quarterbacks, Jake Fromm, Jacob Eason, and Joe Burrow. And we're going to talk about them from an NFL perspective. How are these three quarterbacks developing as NFL prospects? And obviously there are a lot more quarterback prospects in college football, guys. I'm not going to talk about Justin Herbert or Tua. Today the focus is on Jake Fromm, Jacob Eason, and Joe Burrow. So Jake Fromm first, the quarterback at Georgia. Uh, I, I love Jake Fromm's leadership. I, I'm really a fan of the guy, the way he carries himself. His teammates love him. His coaches respect him and believe in him. And his leadership is why it wouldn't shock me if he went to the NFL and found success a similar way to the way Gardner Minshew or Dak Prescott have done it. You know, Dak Prescott and Gardner Minshew seemingly came out of nowhere. They were later round draft picks. And Jake Fromm immediately was successful. I think Jake Fromm, excuse me, I think Jake Fromm could do something like that the same way Gardner Minshew or Dak Prescott did. He's won a lot of games. Jake Fromm has. He's played well in some big moments. But the truth is that right now, Jake Fromm is not a first-round pick. He's not. His arm isn't that impressive. He throws kind of a weaker spiral. It's not very tight. The ball tends to die a little bit as it travels. He also often has a ton of time to throw in the pocket. I mean, the dude sits back there. for Watch the Florida-Georgia game. Jake Fromm had time for days. He likely will not have that in the NFL. The one thing we haven't seen from Jake Fromm uh, enough, in my opinion, is in the NFL, Jake Fromm is going to have to move around and slide in the pocket way more than he's had to do at Georgia. He just He's just got so much time there in the pocket with Georgia. He's also usually playing with a really good running game and superior athletes. He's got a, a better team usually than a lot of teams in college football. So he's a junior at Georgia, Jake Fromm is, and uh, I... I believe he should stay for his senior year in college football. I don't think he should leave. Um, I think he would anyways. You know, Jake Fromm is the ultimate company man. He puts his program first. But I really think Jake Fromm, as a junior, should stay in college for one more year, try to get better. Uh, now, the question is, um, you know, Stan could really help him. Occasionally, he makes really bad decisions. There's a play where, uh, against Florida, Georgia ran two seam routes up the middle, and Jake Fromm didn't look off the safety. The safety just moved right where the ball was. And Jake Fromm really should have gone to the other side where the receiver was wide open, tight end was wide open. He had a touchdown. He didn't do it. And so the question is, if Jake Fromm comes back for senior year, could he take a big step forward and get dramatically better in that time? And I doubt it. I, I don't think I don't see that happening for Jake Fromm. Um, unless Georgia gets some kind of new creative assistant coach, I don't think Jake Fromm is going to take a big step forward. I think he can come back to Georgia. I just don't think Jake Fromm is going to get dramatically better between his junior and senior year. Um, and I think Jake Fromm is not, not a first-round quarterback, and I don't know that he's going to become one. Hope so, but something's going to have to change coaching-wise for Georgia in order for Jake Fromm to do that. And I'm not a hater. I love Jake Fromm. I just, I don't, what I've seen from an NFL perspective is a guy who plays with really vastly superior players, has a ton of time to throw in the pocket, has a weaker arm, not a very tight spiral, the ball kind of dies. Jake Fromm right now is not at all a first-round quarterback. And unless he makes great strides and changes and evolves, which he could, he's not going to be. And that's why I want to talk about Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow this year has taken a massive step forward. You know, Joe Burrow went from a guy who was probably like a fourth or fifth round pick going into the year. And because of his play and how much better he's gotten, he's elevated himself to maybe being even the best quarterback in the entire NFL draft. Literally, it's, it's that big of a difference. Uh, I think a big reason for this is because LSU got an incredible hire. They hired Joe Brady from the Saints as the passing game coordinator of their offense. Joe Brady has had a huge impact on Joe Burrow. But it's not just the coach. This is why I love Joe Burrow and I'm so excited about him is, yeah, Joe Burrow got a much better coach helping him. But he did a ton of work by himself. Like, I, I, I call this boiler room work. So when I was in college, I would go to a boiler room by myself where it was loud. I could just yell the playbook and go through all the playbook by myself. Joe Burrow does a lot of boiler room work on his own. 
where he's more accurate thanks to better footwork this year. He has mastered LSU's offense. He's extremely prepared. He always knows exactly where to go with the ball. Joe Burrow's improved his mechanics. He's made his arm stronger this year. He uses his core better. He's got better separation with the ball. And you don't need to... I don't, I don't. I haven't seen any of that stuff. You know, in the offseason, I never saw Joe Burrow tweeting about what he's doing. I haven't heard any stories or pieces written about the work Joe Burrow did. I see it on game day. I see always... His mechanics are better. His footwork's better. His understanding of the offense is better. He's just got better on his own. And that's so cool to me that... Joe Burrow elevated himself to maybe being in the conversation as the best quarterback in the NFL draft next year. Tua, Justin Herbert, maybe Joe Burrow, and maybe Joe Burrow is the top of that list. You know, if nothing else, Joe Burrow has gotten himself into that conversation, and that's really, really cool. His timing, his accuracy. I love Joe Burrow. I'm a big fan. Um, and he's really, really impressed me with the work ethic he brought. And not only how much better he's gotten, but how good he is now. He's like, oh, wow. Joe Burrow is a really good quarterback. And now the last guy I want to talk about is University of Washington quarterback Jacob Eason. Actually, a funny, a former Georgia quarterback who got beat out by Jake Fromm. And the reason for that, in my opinion, is because Jake Fromm makes better decisions than Jacob Eason. And they won. I mean, you know, the situation took hold and Georgia was winning. Sure, whatever. Um, but I'm I'm not impressed with Jacob Eason, and I really want to be. I really, uh, I, I so badly want Jacob Eason to be awesome. I, in fact, before the year, I predicted he would be incredible, and he hasn't been so far. He's been disappointing, you know, in my opinion. Um, you know, I acknowledge that his arm is incredible, and everybody talks about Jacob Eason's arm strength. He's got the best arm in college football. Yeah, he does. His arm is unbelievable. He's very accurate. He can throw like a million miles an hour really, really far. Congratulations. The dude can sling the rock. However, if you've watched the last couple of games for Washington, <laughs> if you go back and watch Utah versus UW last weekend, Jacob Eason <laughs> made some really boneheaded throws, and he has all year. Repeatedly this year, when I watch Jacob Eason, I go, that's a bad, what are you doing? That's a really, that's a bad decision. That's a bad decision. That's a bad, why would you throw there? What are you doing? Over and over again, I go, man, what is Jacob Eason doing? And I, you know, my whole philosophy here is, you know, why is Jacob Eason forcing the ball into coverage? Why is he forcing the ball to throws and throwing the ball to places where it's not, and he's, they're not open. And in my opinion, I don't think that Jacob Eason is ready for the NFL. He's a junior. I think he should stay in college. Um, you know, I, I'm from Washington. I grew up in Washington. I grew up in Portland, moved to Washington. But I, I've been in the state of Washington training with quarterbacks and around the quarterback scene in the Northwest for a long time. And I know people in the building at the University of Washington. And um, the people that I know say that he hasn't mastered the playbook. And it shows. It, it shows on Saturdays. Jacob Eason is not on top of things. And some of his teammates question his work ethic. You, you never want to hear that about a quarterback. And here's what's most telling. Here's an example of this that they're frustrated with that I notice is that Jacob Eason transferred into Washington, which meant that he had to take an entire year off where he couldn't play on Saturdays. All he could do was practice with the team. He had to redshirt. <laughs> and as a, as a player, it's kind of exciting because you have a year where you can't play. So you have a year just to prove to work out, to get stronger, to get better, and to really understand the playbook. So he had to sit out for an entire year and practice with the team. And it's weird to me that Jacob Eason was there for an entire year and he didn't master Washington's offense. <laughs> like, hello? You know, when Baker Mayfield transferred from Texas Tech to Oklahoma, he missed a year. I had to sit out a year. All, all Baker could do is practice with Oklahoma. And he used the year to learn and master the offense. When we saw Baker Mayfield after that year off, oh, dude, he was electric. He was on top of things. He knew exactly where to go with the ball. He made great decisions. Jacob Eason didn't bring that same intensity to this. Jacob Eason has this incredible arm. 
that everyone loves, that I go, I can acknowledge. You watch film, you go, dude, that ball comes out differently. The way Jacob Eason throws the ball, unbelievable. Now, I, don't, I, I really don't want you to read into this, but I just thought of this. <laughs> Jamarcus Russell has the most incredible arm anyone's ever seen. On his knees, he can throw the ball like 85 yards and hit the goalpost. You're like, Jesus. Having an incredible arm doesn't matter if you don't do the work behind the scenes. There are really brilliant moments when you watch Jacob Eason. You go, wow. But I think he's always gotten away with things in his career because he's had that incredible arm. Uh, you know, <laughs> Jacob Eason hasn't needed intense preparation because he's always been so physically gifted he can get away with it. He doesn't need it. But number two, you know, Joe Burrow, the quarterback at LSU, has really benefited from not having the strongest arm in college football because it's forced him to have really good timing. Joe Burrow has great footwork and great timing because he needs to in order to succeed. Jacob Eason doesn't. Jacob Eason can be a hair late on a throw, and the college level still force it in there because his, his arm is so strong, he can throw the ball fast enough to get it in there. At the NFL level, it won't be the same deal for Jacob Beeson. It may be sometimes. Matthew Stafford does it sometimes. But Jacob Beeson, you know, this is a... I don't, I don't like this. I'm going to compare. And Jacob Beeson reminds me a lot of Josh Allen and even Deshaun Kaiser, quarterback a couple years ago from Notre Dame. And it's not fair because, you know, Jacob Beeson is far, far more accurate than Josh Allen was. But all these NFL scouts loved, loved Josh Allen's arm and ignored his other issues. They ignored the fact that he struggled to read defenses. They ignored the fact that he wasn't very polished. You know, coaches in the NFL look at guys like Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen in college and go, man, I can fix that kid. I can, that kid's so talented. Get him in my system. I can do great with him. But it's not just the coach. The, co the coach can't decide to do the work for the player. I, I really believe it's largely on a player. If they want to succeed, they have to do the work and be coachable enough and do the work to get better. So far, I'm not impressed with Jacob Eason's work ethic. I really hope he stays in college. Um, you know, he, he could go to the NFL right now, probably be a first-round pick. Jacob Eason could. He's that talented. Go to the NFL, get really rich. Have a good life. Be phenomenal. But I think if Jacob Eason wants to have a longer NFL career, I think staying in college and, and improving as a quarterback would really, really help his chances of having a longer NFL career. The biggest question with Jacob Eason, and I hate doing this, it's kind of a, it's, it is personal, right? This is a, this, if someone questions my work ethic, that's personal. And I understand the implications of what I'm saying. But what I see on Saturdays is a guy who's not prepared and hasn't mastered his offense and had a year to do it and didn't. And I look, that's brutal, but I'm just being honest. That's what I see. Jacob Eason had a whole year and still looks unprepared at times this year. What does that say about Jacob Eason? What does that say about his work ethic? Is it there? That's the biggest question. I hope... I really hope he succeeds. He's so talented. He could be a great NFL quarterback. Um, seems like a nice guy, too. Like The people I know that know him say he's, he's a nice guy. But I hope he comes back to college and does the work to really elevate his game because the talent is there. The decision-making from Jacob Eason is not, and that's frustrating and disappointing to watch uh, as someone who evaluates quarterbacks and, and loves quarterbacks and loves the position. It's a shame to see Jacob Eason not be better and not be as polished as I think he should be as I think, as I think he could be. I want Jacob Eason to be better and I hope he does the work to do that. My name is Zach Schaumler. This is my podcast, Strong Opinion Sports. It's my favorite thing in the entire world. And I want to be very clear and open with the audience. Um, my YouTube channel is monetized. What that means is that some of my videos make ad revenue. It's fewer than you think. A lot of them get claimed. But in the past, I've received donations from people on Patreon and PayPal, paypal.me forward slash Zach Schaumler, patreon.com forward slash Zach Schaumler. And because I'm making ad revenue, it felt kind of weird just receiving donations. I wanted to give something back for the donations. 
And so people who support me on Patreon can give me a dollar a month and that allows them access to a pool where they can ask questions. If you send me questions through Patreon, Patreon's DM service, you comment on one of my posts on Patreon. Uh, if you give a dollar a month, you can submit questions. And with my eyeballs, I look at every single question submitted. Then at the end of my podcast, I pick the best top couple questions and read them on the show and answer them in a segment I call Ask Zach. Now that's for people who have money and want to support me that way. If you have no money to give, no problem. I totally understand. I grew up in a mobile home. I've been a broke college kid. I totally get it. Um, but if you want to help in some capacity at the end, you can support the show by telling your friends about it. Share it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it is. Help me grow by telling your friends about this show. It would mean a lot to me. Uh, if you believe in my dream and you believe in this show, tell your friends about Strong Opinion Sports. Guys, my name is Zach Schaumler. Thank you so very much, and I uh, hope you have a great day.